welcome you all in this session of basic mechanical engineering i am suresh chaudhary assistant professor department of mechanical engineering skit college jaipur in previous lectures we have understood the important concept of boiler how the boiler is utilized to produce the steam we have understood the classification of the boilers different criteria to classify the boiler we identified or we studied three different types of boilers that is lamont boiler babcock and wilcox boiler and cochran boiler now in this lecture we will understand different types of power plants so the first is the steam power plant layout in a steam power plant steam is utilized for production of electricity again i am repeating in a steam power plant the steam is used for the purpose of producing electricity steam power plant is also known as thermal power plant so we have to discuss in this lecture in this lecture i am going to discuss a simple layout of a steam power plant with all uh, all its important components and parts so let's discuss the power plant layout steam power plant layout let's begin with the boiler this is the boiler over here look at that this is the boiler boiler is used for the purpose of production of steam means at the exit of the boiler you are having dry and saturated steam uh, as far as this diagram is concerned so the boiler is used for the production of a steam the boiler is used for production of steam please note this is the ash handling plant and ash storage so whatever the ash is generated through the combustion of the coal whatever the ash is generated through the combustion of the coal is handled by ash handling plant and sent to the ash storage site that ash is handled by the ash handling plant and sent to the ash storage site similarly there is the coal storage location from coal storage location the coal handling plant supplies coal to the boiler please note there is separate coal handling plant that supplies coal from coal storage site to the boiler as per the need and ash is handled by the ash handling plant and sent to the ash storage unit now look at this boiler now boiler let's start from the here the boiler is the component where the steam is produced so inside boiler firstly let's supply coal i have supplied coal over here inside the boiler the combustion of the coal causes release of steam please note from here now please observe the feed water is coming from here the feed water the water is coming over here water enters through the economizer water enters through the economizer into the boiler water first goes into the economizer then it goes to the boiler now why economizer is used please observe in the boiler in the boiler the flue gases are generated in the boiler flue gases are generated these flue gases are sent into the superheater where this steam which is coming out of the boiler is superheated please note flue gases are coming out of the boiler as a result of combustion of the fuel hot flue gases are coming out of the boiler as a result of combustion of the fuel while steam is generated inside the boiler now this steam is sent to the superheater at the same time the flue gases are also allowed to flow through the superheater so that the the waste heat of the flue gases is utilized utilized to superheat the steam now the steam moves in this direction steam goes to this direction while the flue gases are moving like this the flue gases are moving like this the flue gas enters the superheater the steam is superheated the steam is superheated over here now superheated steam moves through the turbine at the same time the flue gases are going passing through the flue gases are passing through economizer and air preheater so please note this is the flue gas circuit this is the flue gas circuit please note very carefully this is the flue gas circuit the flue gases hot flue gases are generated inside the boiler and now these hot flue gases are allowed to flow through superheater economizer air preheater and then they are discharged to the atmosphere with the help of a chimney through the chimney they are discharged into the atmosphere so this is our flue gas circuit so flue gases before discharging into the atmosphere move through the superheater economizer and air preheater in superheater the flue gases are utilized to superheat the steam which has been produced by the boiler in superheater the flue gases are used to superheat the steam which has been produced by the boiler now this uh, inside the superheater the formation of the superheated steam takes place and the steam moves to this direction now the superheated steam goes to the turbine while the flue gas circuit is this now after superheater the flue gases are allowed to flow through the economizer here the waste heat of the flue gases is utilized by the feed water economizer is kind of water preheater this feed water which we are going to supplied inside the boiler would be preheated inside the economizer 
by using the waste heat of the flue gases. So this uh, this feed water would be heated up inside the economizer. Economizer acts as an as a water preheater, and then water is sent to the boiler. Again, there is air preheater. Flue gases are now allowed to flow through the air preheater. The inside air preheater, the preheating of the air takes place, which is about to be supplied inside the boiler. After preheating the air, the air is supplied inside the boiler for the combustion of the fuel. Now, after air preheater, the flue gases are discharged via a chimney to the atmosphere. Flue gases are discharged via a chimney to the atmosphere. I think this flue gas circuit is clear to you. Now, the superheated steam, the formation of the superheated steam takes place inside the superheater. Now, this steam is allowed to flow in this direction through this main valve. Now, the steam enters the turbine. Please note, this is very important. I will deliver a separate lecture over the turbines. So please note over here what is the function of turbine. Inside the turbine, expansion of the steam takes place. Please note, inside the turbine, expansion of the steam takes place. Turbine consists of a set of nozzles and moving vanes or rotor. The turbine consists of rotor and nozzles. The expansion of the steam takes place in the turbine. As a result of that, the shaft of the turbine rotates. Please note, I will deliver a separate lecture over the turbine. But first of all, we have to learn over here that when steam enters the turbine, the expansion of the steam takes place means the pressure of the steam drops and this expansion of the steam causes, causes rotation of the shaft of the turbine, results into rotation of the shaft of the turbine. So through the expansion of the steam in the turbine, the shaft of the turbine rotates. When expansion of the steam takes place inside the turbine, the shaft of the turbine rotates. This shaft is coupled with the shaft of the generator. The shaft of the turbine is coupled with the shaft of the generator and inside the generator, this mechanical energy is converted into the electrical energy. Generator is a device that converts the mechanical energy. Thus, this rotating element is having mechanical energy. This mechanical energy is converted into electrical energy inside the generator. Please note. So in turbine, the expansion of the steam takes place. As a result of that expansion, the shaft of the turbine rotates. How this expansion occurs, I will tell you in a separate lecture. So please note that when when steam works inside the turbine, the, it causes the shaft of the turbine to rotate. It means the, the enthalpy of the steam has been converted into the kinetic energy or mechanical energy inside the turbine. So shaft of the turbine rotates. The shaft of the turbine is coupled with the shaft of the generator and inside the generator, the mechanical energy is converted into the electrical energy and we will have electrical power. Now, please note. Now, when the steam has been expanded in the turbine. Now exhaust steam is sent back to a condenser where steam is condensed, where steam is condensed. The steam is sent back to the condenser where steam is condensed and converted into the liquid and this liquid or water is again pumped back to the boiler and the same continues. Please note over here, the steam from the exhaust of the turbine is collected and it is condensed inside a condenser using the water of a river or canal. So, from this exhaust steam, the exhaust steam is condensed inside the condenser and, and it, it is again pumped back to the boiler in this fashion and it continues. So to understand, to, to, to if you want to explain someone and you want to write some theory about this, then you can explain this whole layout with the help of these four different circuits. Means four different circuits are involved in this whole layout where the electricity is produced. First is feed water and steam flow circuit. This is our feed water. This is our feed water and steam flow circuit. Please note, this is the feed water pump. This is our feed water. This is our feed water and steam flow circuit. Please note, I am again feed water and steam flow circuit. Feed water and steam flow circuit. You have to explain all these components feed water and steam flow circuit in this particular heading. Now cooling water circuit. This is our cooling water circuit where a cooling tower is there and uh, uh, cold river water is utilized to condense the water, condense the steam which is coming out of the turbine. So you can explain this circuit separately. Next is coal and ash circuit. It is quite visible. This is our coal circuit. This is ash circuit. So we can explain coal and ash circuit uh, in a different manner. Now air and gas circuit, air is coming from air preheater air preheater and flue gases are going like this. This is our air and gas circuit. This is our air. This is our air and gas circuit. Gas means flue gas circuit. Flue gas circuit. So this is 
all about the steam power plant. This is a simple layout of the steam power plant where mechanical energy is converted into the electrical energy by means of a generator. So first of all, we generate a steam with the help, we generate a steam with the help of a boiler. Now expansion of the steam takes place in the turbine. From the expansion of the steam inside the turbine, the mechanical energy is produced means the shaft of the turbine rotates. How this takes place, I will deliver in the separate lecture. Now shaft of the turbine is coupled with the shaft of the generator and inside generator, the mechanical energy is converted into the electrical energy and that, that is how the electricity is produced and you can explain all, the whole layout with the help of four different circuits which we have already seen. Now this is the steam power plant layout. Now we will also understand the layout of a diesel power plant we will also understand the layout of a diesel power plant please note again in a power plant what we have to do we have to first of all generate the mechanical energy means we have to rotate the shaft of the engine or shaft of the turbine and then this mechanical energy is converted into the electrical energy and this mechanical energy is converted into the electrical energy or electricity with the help of a generator so in diesel power plant also we are going to first convert the convert the chemical energy of some fuel into the mechanical energy and then this mechanical energy is utilized to produce electricity inside the generator so please observe the diagram very carefully this is the diesel engine this is the diesel engine we have already understood that we have already learned the working of a four stroke or two stroke diesel engine so it will not be a big deal to understand this kind of power plant for us please observe this is a diesel engine this is the shaft of the engine this is the shaft of the engine the first circuit over here is the compressed air circuit air is taken from the atmosphere it is compressed by the compressor air is taken from the atmosphere it is compressed by the co compressed by some some compressor it is compressed by some compressor this is the air filter that purifies the air now this compressed air is supplied the air is compressed to a suitable compression ratio inside this compressor now compressed air is supplied inside the diesel engine so first step is to supply compressed air inside the diesel engine we have supplied compressed air inside the diesel engine and we know that when the compression of the air takes place it causes increase in the pressure and temperature of the air through the compression the temperature as well as the pressure of the air increases so we are supplying compressed air inside the diesel engine compressed air inside the diesel engine which is having very high pressure and high temperature now please note here is the fuel tank or diesel tank the fuel tank is supplied with the help of a fuel pump it is the fuel pump this is the filter fuel filter so from the fuel tank the fuel pump supplies the fuel inside the engine inside the engine the fuel pump supplies fuel from the fuel tank which is diesel tank or fuel tank so fuel pump extracts fuel from the fuel tank and supplies it into the diesel engine now here is the fuel injector means injection of the, the inside the injector the fuel is atomized and vaporized and injected inside the engine please note while this fuel injector is used inside the fuel injector the fuel is atomized and vaporized fuel is atomized and vaporized and inside the engine when the fuel is sprayed atomized and vaporized fuel is sprayed the combustion of fuel takes place because there is already hot air inside the engine please note this is similar to that of diesel engine we have i am we are just understanding the diesel engine we have to rotate the shaft so when the fuel is when the when the combustion of the fuel takes place inside the engine there is connecting rod crank and this is the crankshaft and the crankshaft rotates a simple procedure this is the diesel engine engine means there is a piston connecting rod and crank when combustion of the fuel takes place over here when the fuel comes in contact with the hot air the combustion of the fuel takes place through the combustion of the fuel thrust is exerted on the piston since the piston is connected to the crankshaft by means of a connecting rod and crank the, rot the reciprocating motion of the piston is converted into the rotary motion of the crankshaft so this is similar to what we have already understood in a diesel engine so due to the combustion of the fuel thrust is exerted on the piston and the reciprocating motion of the piston is converted into the rotary motion of the crankshaft by means of a connecting rod and crank please note now the shaft rotates since the shaft rotates it means there is mechanical energy now the shaft is coupled with the shaft of the generator you can also have a coupling over here the shaft is coupled with the shaft of the generator and inside the generator this mechanical energy is converted into the electrical energy inside generator the mechanical energy is converted into the electrical energy so i think you have understood this entire circuit
we are going to do nothing but we are using a diesel engine in which air and fuel are supplied the combustion of fuel takes place which causes rotation of this crankshaft and the mechanical energy is further converted into the electrical energy by means of generator generator converts the mechanical energy into the electrical energy or electricity is produced now since the engine is there we have to use a proper cooling system as well so a lubricating oil tank is there with the help of a lubricating oil pump the lubricating oil is pumped to the diesel engine the lubricating oil is responsible for cooling of the critical parts of the engine and this used when engine has cooled the when the oil has cooled the engine this used oil is again cooled over here and supplied back to the lubricating oil tank so this is not that much important circuit you have to understand this, this important circuit these upper part again i am repeating the lubricating oil over here is used for cooling of the engine because the temperature of the engine is not allowed to go beyond a certain limit this limit is fixed by the critical temperature of the important parts of the engine so lubricating oil is supplied by means of lubricating oil pump it enters the engine it cools the important parts of the engine or keeps the temperature of the engine below certain critical limit and then this used oil which is hotter now because it has extracted the heat from the engine since for cooling since it has cooled the engine it has extracted heat from the engine now this used oil returns back to an oil cooler where it gets cooled down by using water from a canal or river in oil cooler water from a canal or river is utilized to cool this oil and now cool oil is again supplied to the oil tank so this is the basic layout of a layout of a diesel power plant diesel electrical power plant is also it is also known as diesel electric power plant or simple diesel power plant so i think it is very easy if you understand the concept of a diesel engine then you can easily explain the concept of layout of a diesel power plant thank you